Hello and welcome. Game theory in operations research. And now we are going to discuss about the dominance rule. The dominance rule is a procedure to reduce the order of the game. Yes. See, this is a game of 3 by 3. It can be 3 by 3, 3 by 4, 3 by 5, 4 by 5, 5 by 5, much higher order. And in such cases, it is, or rather it becomes difficult to find out the saddle point. And if the game is without the saddle point, then it becomes too much, say, hard for not only a student, for any person actually, to solve the game through the algebraic method or say anything and on the other hand we know that if we want to say solve the game by formula method or arithmetic method or the methods which we are going to discuss in future say um, linear programming method it becomes too hard if the game is of a higher order greater than 2 by 2 so is there any way to reduce the order of a game or say straight away as a student I want this game if it is possible to be a game of 2 by 2 is it possible yes and this procedure of reducing the order of a game is known as dominance rule what is the dominance rule these are strategies. A1, A2, A3 are the possible strategies with A and B1, B2, B3 are the possible strategies with B. A wants to say maximize his or her minimum possible gain and B wants to minimize his or her maximum possible loss. Yes, this is something like tug of war. By selecting the proper or optimal strategy. That means at a time A is going to select only one strategy as well as the B is going to select only one strategy. All other strategies will be foregone or ignored. Not actually ignored, sorry. Yeah. So can we check which strategy for A or for B is worth for going to. Yes. If we know, we can ignore that strategy. And then, in this way, we can reduce the order of the game. And this process or this procedure is known as dominance rule. The name dominance is because say, in case of A, if any one strategy has greater gain or profit than any other strategy in all possible circumstances, then that strategy dominates the other strategy. And which strategy is dominated by the other can be ignored can be ignored means we can delete it from the table and hence the order of the game can be reduced. Let's begin with A because A is the hero of the game because we believe that A is the gainer. So everything is done as point of view. Now let's compare A1 and A2. What is the situation? In case of B1 selected by B, a2 dominates A1. But in case of B2 selected by B, A1 dominates A2. So in all the three possibilities, no one is dominating the other. In case of strategy change by B, the dominance change. So there is no continuous dominance. So let's compare A1 and A3. Yes, in first case A3 has greater gain, in second case A1 has so no dominance. Now let's compare A2 and A3. This is the 
This is last chance actually. Same, yes. Lower loss in case of A2, yes. Again lower loss in case of A2. That means A3 is dominated by A2. So we can say that in favor of A2, we can ignore or say delete A3. Yes, we can delete. Let's use a red line. We can delete this. Because A2 is better than A3 so far as the gain is concerned. For this purpose, in case of A, the gainer gain from an sorry gain from a strategy should be equal or greater than the gain from another strategy gain from a2 is equal to or greater than the gain from a3 so we can conclude that a2 dominates a3 and hence we can believe that a is never going to select A3 because he has a better choice of A2. So we delete A3 from the game. And the game is now something like this. Please don't forget A is gainer, B is loser. Always in case of two player game, remember that. Now the game is like this. So we compared all the possibilities in case of A. Now let's do the same thing for B. Sorry. B1 and B2. Now mind well, B is believed to be a loser. So, we need loss minimization. The criteria is now different. We want to minimize the loss. So, at the time of determining or thinking about the dominance, we have to check which strategy has the lower possible loss. In case of B1 and B2, it is 10 and minus 5, minus 10 and 5. So in this comparison B1 dominates but in this comparison B2 dominates. So no dominance. Yes, similarly B1, B3, B1, B3 in case of this first B1 dominates, in this case B3 dominates, no dominance. B2 and B3. B2 and B3. What happens? B2 and B3. Lower loss in case of B2. And there, these two are equal. So we can say that B2 is dominating B3. Yes. B3 is dominated by... B2. So we can delete B3. We can delete B3. And now the game of 2 by 2 will be Maximum is 
minus 5, this becomes maximum, column maximum. It is 5 and 10, and 5 is the minimax. Maximin and minimax both are the different values situated at different geographical point. That means we can conclude that this is a game without saddle point. And if the game is without saddle point, we have to go for mixed strategies. And for that purpose, we need to find out the probabilities. And again, we are going to use the technique or rather shortcut method or arithmetic method. And yes, okay, what to do? First of all, 5 minus minus 10 equals to 15 and 10 minus minus 5 equals to also 15. So P1 will be 15 upon summation of both the 15. 15 by 30 is equal to 1 by 2. And P2 will be 15 upon 15 plus 15. That is 15 by 30. That is 1 by 2. So P1 is 1 by 2 and P2 is also 1 by 2. That means we can say that A would use strategies A1 and A2 in the ratio of 1 is to 1 that is 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 in random manner. A would use A1 and A2 strategies in the ratio of 1 is to 1 in random manner. And if that happens, what will be the expected gain of A with the help of these two probabilities? If B uses B1, it will be minus 5 into 1 by 2 plus 10 into 1 by 2. That is... minus 5 and 10 minus 5 into 1 by 2 and 10 into 1 by 2 oh sorry it should not be 10 it should be 5 yeah so 5 by 2 negative plus 5 by 2 that is 0 and in case of a2 it is 5 into 1 by 2 plus minus 10 into 1 by 2. So again it is 5 by 2 plus minus 5 by 2. It is 0. So now we can conclude that A would use A1 and A2 in the ratio of 1 is to 1. That is 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 in random manner. In long run. So many times the game is played. And the ratio in which A uses A1 and A2 comes to 1 is to 1. And ultimately, in long run, A's expected gain will be 0. Yes, it will be 0. Now, let's calculate everything for B. Yes, what will be that? For A and B. 10 minus minus 10 comes to 20 and here 5 minus minus 5 comes to 10. So Q1 will be 20 upon 20 plus 10 that is 20 by 30 that is 2 by 3. Q2 will be 10 upon 20 plus 10 that is 10 by 30 that is 1 by 3. That means B would use B1 and B2 
इन द रेशियो ऑफ टू इज टू थ्री इन रैंडम मैनर इन लॉन्ग रन यस बी वुड यूज बी वन एंड बी टू इन द रेशियो ऑफ टू इज टू थ्री दैट इज टू बाई थ्री टू इज टू वन आई एम वेरी सॉरी टू बाई थ्री एंड वन बाई थ्री इन द रेंडम मैनर नाउ इफ बी यूजेस बी वन एंड बी टू इन द रेशियो ऑफ टू इज टू थ्री वॉट कैन बी इज एक्सपेक्टेड पे ऑफ दैट इज एक्सपेक्टेड लॉस Expected loss of B in long run will be yes if A uses A one B's expected loss will be minus five into two by three plus ten into one by three that will be minus ten by three plus ten by three zero yes it should match for. Match with the expected gain of A, and similarly, if A uses A two, B's gain will be five into two by three plus minus ten into one by three. Again, it is two by three plus minus ten by three. That comes to zero. So expected loss of B in long run would be zero if B uses B one and B two in the ratio of two is to one in random manner in long run. So now we can say that. Value of gain is zero. Yes, and not only that. If the value of gain is zero, we can say that this is a fair gain. This is a fair gain because value of gain is zero. Remember the basic rules we had learned. So we can conclude that A would use A one and A two in the ratio of one is to win one in random manner in long run, and as a result, his expected gain will be zero. And B would use B one and B two in the ratio of two is to one in random manner in long run, and as a result, his expected loss will be zero. So in this way, in this case, we learned the use of dominance rule, as well as it was something like revision of arithmetic or shortcut method of finding the value of gain, expected loss, mixed strategies, etc., etc. But at the end, we achieved something unique. the value of gain is zero even as a teacher i have come across a very few games having the value of gain as zero and if the value of gain is zero it is called a fair game because the expected gain and expected loss of both the players are zero that's it thank you very much